blasting, billowing, bursting forth with the power of 10 billion butterfly sneezes. I'm Tom Bain, and this is Wine, Money, and Song. If you're interested in wines and wanting to find out the best values, please subscribe. So today I'm going to talk about wine collecting, and I've been collecting wine for over 40 years. And a lot of times I get requests, but what's in your cellar? And uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to get in the car and we're going to take a trip to my cellar and I'm going to show you how I have it organized and I'm going to put some insight on my philosophy of what I've done in the past and I've changed my philosophy now or what am I doing now? So we decided today we're going to load the car up, we're going to go over to the storage facility and we're going to take a look at my storage room and hopefully you'll enjoy. So we're here at the storage facility and I rented a big room uh, and uh, as you see on the left hand side of the shot, uh, you see all the wooden cases. These are Bordeaux and uh, classified Bordeaux mainly and uh, on the bottom, I have the first growths, and these vintages here uh, are the most recent. Uh, it starts at 2020. I have a few. I have some coming in. I have some 19s and 16s and 15s. And then the older wines, as you go down and you, when you make a total circle around here, you'll see the older wines are there. And I have some, uh, some magnums, bigger sizes, on this side. But right here, going down, this is all Bordeaux. There's some bottles, but let's take a trip down to the end, and we'll get some more shots. This is a reverse shot of the original one you just saw, but you see the bins at the end? Now, I actually built these racks myself. It was a kit, but I'm still proud I was able to put some nails in and attach it to the wall, and I think they look nice. And what's in there are bottles that I have maybe three or four left or wines that I'm going to drink soon. But uh, that's what's on the wall. And uh, I'm going to come back and show you some of the better Bordeaux in a minute or two. So on the left side of uh, the other half of the storage room is the older Bordeaux. Uh, these are 86s, 85s, 82s are over there. Uh, and we go down to 1975, but I, I don't have much past, uh, 1979. I just have some bottles, but I do have a case of 75, uh, Ikem. Uh, but generally, uh, as we go down, it's older Bordeaux. So this section here are my burgundies. I really didn't start getting serious about Burgundy till I moved back to the East Coast uh, about 15 years ago because I had all this Bordeaux. And I said, hey, I have to have some Burgundy. And all this is Burgundy with champagne at the bottom. Uh, and I bought very heavily in 2005, uh, 2009, uh, 2010, uh, some 2002s uh, and, and 15s. Uh, the prices of Burgundy have gone crazy, so very little of that's going on. And I have some more on this side, too. But uh, generally, that's uh, these are where all my Burgundies are. And maybe I have 75 cases of really good Burgundy, uh, Premier Cru and Grand Cru. And you see a whole shot of my bins lining up <clears throat> the uh, south-facing wall. Uh, and, uh, it makes it much easier for me to, uh, put four or five bottles of, uh, something, uh, all together instead of having them all over the place. So I like the way it looks. It's very clean and, uh, I know where everything is. So, uh, that's helpful. And I have some California wines here. I have uh, diamond Creek, uh, you know, I'll have two or three of each vintage, uh, what you called scattered. I really like uh, Bedrock a lot. So I have uh, uh, several cases here of uh, Bedrock here too. And um, 
over here, if you can just switch it a little bit here, I have magnums here. This is where all my magnums are. And um, I have two or three bottles. Uh, you know, I have magnums of my Comus, one of my favorite wines. Uh, one of my top five growths from California. Uh, I have some Burgundy. I have some really good uh, Rioja wines here. Uh, but it's odds and ends. I buy at auction. Or I have a few left over that I've used already. So those are my bins. And I'd like to show you a few of my special wines. So we here, I'm going to show you a few of my uh, uh, favorite wines or, or special wines. Uh, I do have Petrus. Uh This is a six-pack of the 2000, and I, and I have several of them. Uh, and as I said, I bought these wines when they were probably a third of the price of what they are now. Uh, I got some Trottenois. We got some Latour 2000 here. This is where on the bottom where it's coolest. I keep the better wines, the first growths. And if we pan over here, uh, I have magnums here, boxes of magnums. And uh, if you can get a close-up over here, I have Le Mission Aubryon 98, which I consider to be a great wine. That's in magnums. Uh, what else do I have that's mint? Uh, uh, there's a few others. 1990 Montrose in magnums. Very, very... Uh, an incredible wine. Uh, we have, uh, let's see what else is special. Lynch Bage 85 and 89 in Magnum. Two very different wines. 85 uh, Lynch Bage is very elegant and beautiful, while the 89 is very powerful and, and, re and really rich. Uh, 95 Mouton Rothschild, uh, excellent, excellent Mouton. Uh, Magnum, uh, Case of Magnums of Lafitte, 1990, uh, Cheval Blanc, 95 Magnums, uh, uh, and uh, Grand Prix Lacoste, 2010 Magnums, and I have a whole bunch of Magnums up under here too, uh, but, you know, there's some famous ones, 85 Aubryon, which is a classic Aubryon, uh, right here. Uh, 1990 Margot, uh, Ponte Canet, um, Latour Magnums, 1990. Uh, some of them are hiding behind here, but uh, that's where I have the Magnums. And here, here I start Italian wines. This is Productori 2016. Great wines. Great wines. I stocked up on them. And Chianti's. Uh, Barolo's, uh, Giacomo Conterno, uh, Francia, uh, 2006, 7, all of these wines, Brunello's, Chianti's, uh, 2017 Productori right here, and a lot of Barolo's right here, a lot of Barolo's, Brovia, uh, more Conterno, more Productori, uh, and these are magnums, loose magnums of uh, Bordeaux also that are plugged in. But uh, let's take a journey on the other side just quickly. And I have more burgundies here. I have some Rumier 1999 Bonmar, which is uh, a heavy header. Uh, I have a lot of Jardot wines that I bought at good prices uh, and, and, and uh, from really good vintages. And we start California wines here. Uh, I'm very, very heavy on... I bought a lot of Reese Pinot Noir. I like them. I have them here stacked up. I have a lot of Maya Camus. Uh, and take a look at Dominus here. I have all these cases of Dominus. Just get these in the pictures. This is all Dominus. That's Dominus. Uh, I have uh, three liters, uh, and I have a six liter somewhere. Uh, and 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 there's more early Dominus, bigger size Dominus, more Dominus, Dominus here. Uh, this is a six liter ninety four. Uh, 
I was involved when Dominus uh, first came into being that Christian Muex was doing a lot of business with us and wanted us to sell his wines. So I have my Camus up there, uh, and uh, I have a lot of Ridge wines also, which is my favorite uh, wines. Uh, and, when we, and when we review the wines, uh, I will go into that more, but a lot of Ridge wines uh, all, all over the place. So let me just show you one or two things on the way out. And obviously the 82s are over here somewhere. Uh, I, I still have maybe 10 cases of 82s. Uh, here's Brown Ader Crew, Leoville Lascasse here, 82. Canon, 82. Latour Aubryon, more Canon. I have some Pavi, my mistake. Uh, Domaine de Chevalier and, and uh, the first grocer underneath here. Uh, and, and there's Petrus, 82. Uh, is it 82? It should be, yep. Some Margot left over. In other cases, a Petrus 85. So let's go around, finish out this. I'll shut this off. Okay. And before we leave, before we leave, I was wandering around, sorting things out, and I saw this bottle in a bag and I took it out and it was a bottle of Ravigno Clos 1999 and I, and I didn't know I had a bottle left and this bottle goes for four or five thousand dollars and I thought I drank it all but I found a spare bottle laying around so it's good to look around so basically this is how I have my cellar and as I said, I'm not buying the first growths anymore because of the prices and a lot of the Grand Cru uh, burgundies too. But this is what I have, and I'm very proud of it. And uh, hopefully I'm going to live long enough to drink it. So we're back at the studio, and uh, ho hopefully you enjoyed my little view of uh, my... my uh, wine collection and hopefully you understand where I was and where I'm going but um, I picked very carefully what I bought and I concentrated in certain areas and uh, once wines become too expensive I stop and I find something else that interests me but uh, if you go back to one of our last episodes uh, the uh, the first gross of California Cabernets. Uh, at the top, I put Ridge Montebello that I thought is my favorite California uh, Cabernet based wine. And it's not a Napa Valley wine, it's a Santa Cruz mountain wine, which has more minerality to it and, and it's a cooler region. Uh, so, what I decided to do, how much I loved it, I was buying six to 12 bottles of fifths, I started buying some magnums. And then all of a sudden I said, hey, if this is the best, I'm going to concentrate on it. So I have bought a collection of three liters of Ridge Montebello. And starting with 2003, I would like to show you my collection. And I'm very proud of it. Okay, just to explain why I have collected uh, one wine short of 15 consecutive Ridge Montebellos. Uh, I feel that Ridge is, in my humble opinion, uh, my favorite uh, California-based Cabernet, and they've been making great wines for over 60 years. And I really enjoy them, and I think it's unique collecting three liter bottles. So after I'm dead, they're going to have some party, you know? Uh, so let me start out, and most of these wines I bought at auction. I didn't buy retail. Maybe three or four of them I bought retail, but the vast majority at auction. All right, I'm going to start with 2003 and 2004 Montebello, and I don't consider them to be one of the great vintages, although the wines are, are, are very good, beautifully made, aging very well. 
Uh, I really favor 2005. 2005, I love. Uh, it's very elegant. And to me, it's one of the few ridges I would ever say that's Bordeaux-like. But uh, I find that it's very Bordeaux-like, very balanced and elegant. And uh, I really love the 2005. It isn't the favorite one. You know, I've had the nine, uh, the the uh, 90, 91, and 93, uh, no, the 90, the 91, and 92 triumvirate, what everyone says is great. But I think 2005 is right in there. Then we go to 2006, uh, which isn't the greatest Montebello, but very sturdy. Uh, 2007, uh, winemaker Paul Draper called it one of his greatest wines, and I like it immensely, too. Uh, I still think it needs a few more years to get into balance. 2008 is a very, very short harvest. Very little was produced, and the yields in 2008 were, I think, maybe a thousand, uh, 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 maybe a thousand per uh, acre. Uh, it was very, very low, the yields, very low. So there's a very small amount in 2008, but I think it's underrated, and I think. It, it, it has elegance. Then we go to 2009 and 2010. I'm going to couple together. Uh, both excellent vintages. Uh, 10 was a cooler vintage, uh, but both of these wines are stellar. Stellar wines. Uh, the 2011 uh, is kind of light and, and a middling vintage for Montebello, but still very, very well made. And that brings us to the 2012, uh, which is another vintage which was highly received uh, and uh, a, a beautifully balanced wine. And, and all of these wines, by the way, they age for 25, 30 years, most of them. And they go strong. I've never had a ridge. Well, there was a few vintages that were a little iffy in the beginning. And, and after the 2012, 2013 which is a profound vintage of Ridge Montebello. Profound. And uh, it's, con it's going to be considered one of the great ridges in history. And then we go to 2014. What's going on here? It, it looks like an empty casket. And there's a question mark, 2014. Well, that's one I still have to get. And, and I will get it. I will get it. And, and these bottles don't come up very often. Uh, I'll see maybe one or two, three times a year it'll pop up and I have to seize it. So once I put that in, I'll have 15 in a row. And I will buy the 18 and 19 down the road. All right. After the 14, hopefully you'll be resting soon in your nice cradle there. So 2015 and the 2016s. Excellent wines, uh, very, very ridge-like, uh, and they're just in their infancy, you know, infancies, and, and, and you know, they're going to really put on weight and, and really mellow out. And it brings us to the last wine of this vertical, 2017, and 2017 is some Ridge Montebello. Uh, it is a formidable vintage. It's a big vintage. And, and it's rich, and uh, it's going to be considered maybe with the 13s, the, the 5 and the 7 and the 91, the 90s, 91 and 92s. So here is my collection. I'm very proud of it, and I will fill in the 14, uh, hopefully soon, and I will buy the 18 and 19 as they come available. So those are my babies there. I'm, I'm very proud of that, and hopefully you enjoy it.